if you're an autocratic party that wants to monopolize the system, you need to control the judiciary. You need to control the press. You need to control the bureaucracy. The Democrat Party is doing all of it. And it's achieved most of it. The effort at censorship today is something we've never even seen or experienced as a people. Look what happened during the pandemic. Particularly in the blue states, but not exclusively, but particularly in the blue states or the purple states, you had governors conducting themselves like fascists, and they had a great lust for it. They were deciding who could earn a livelihood and who couldn't, whether you could go to a Costco or a church, whether you can go to a gun store or go to an abortion clinic. And you can guess which industries, which businesses, which activities they favored and which they didn't. It wasn't even about science. The iron fist came out and you got a taste of it. And it was a dry run in many ways. Because the Democrat Party does not accept the Constitution. How can it? It stands in the way of what they want to do. It is an un-American party. It's more one of these sort of Marxist European parties. One of the ways that you destroy a society is to rewrite their history. Lenin did it. Mao did it, Castro did it, they all do it. So not only do they project on top of non-Democrats, Republicans and others, their own sickening, murderous bloodlust of a history, but they try to destroy it in the classroom. The 1619 Project. 1619 Project is written by a Marxist pushed by the New York Times, which covered up the Holocaust and did FDR's bidding and does the bidding of the Democrat Party every time it goes to print. 1619 Project is a lie. It's a joke. But it's in thousands and thousands of school districts and classrooms with the support and the resources of the New York Times. Critical race theory was developed in the 1970s pretty much by a Marxist professor who wound up at Harvard started at Stanford, who took the ideological baseline that was pushed hard by Herbert Marcuse, which I wrote about in my prior book, who was a communist who fled Nazi Germany and came to the United States and rather than appreciating the United States, spent his entire life here in the United States trying to overthrow the country. The new left movement, these various student movements that were extremely violent and so forth, uh, they were accolades, if you will, of Herbert Marcuse, as is the critical race theory movement. And you'll also notice that the media pushes all this stuff. The Democrat Party is the monopoly party in this country. The Democrat Party is about more than winning elections. It's about making sure that there's no opposition. Well, it's okay if there's another party running, as long as they lose. And so there have been efforts in all these blue states to make sure that the Republicans lose elected state judges who are trying to make sure Republicans lose, changing the voting system. There's only one party that keeps pushing to change the voting system. The issue isn't whether we have more voters. The issue is whether we have more people who have the right to vote. There is a difference, and there's one party that's trying to destroy all the security barriers against fraud by enshrining fraud in the electoral process, and that's the Democrat Party. I mean, voting absentee ballot without a signature and a date on the envelope used to be illegal. They used to throw those ballots out. Now they count them. Voter harvesting, which is a very passive phrase, means collecting votes after the election's over and counting them. They used to be fraud, criminal fraud. Not anymore. It's part of the electoral process. Having drop boxes that were set up during the pandemic that have no security whatsoever, no cameras watching them. People just drop their ballots in there. Obviously, there's an enormous room for fraud in that. And so they tried to post this H.R. 1 when Nancy Pelosi took over the House, which would have nationalized every election in all the states at the federal level, that is, federal candidates, and abolished every single state protection that was in place. In other words, turn the whole country into California where Republicans can never win. Now, that's one branch of government. They created the fourth branch of government, 
And now they're trying to destroy yet another branch of government that would be the judiciary. They're packing the courts, and Biden is doing it at record speed more than any president since John Kennedy, but he wasn't that ideological, with left-wing bomb throwers. More than any time in over half a century. That's why you get a D.C. Circuit Court filled with these people and other courts that are getting filled with these people. Uh, they're trying to destroy the Supreme Court, like FDR tried to destroy the Supreme Court. They're very aggressive about trying to create, in effect, a judicial Politburo. And if you're an autocratic party that wants to monopolize the system, you need to control the judiciary. You need to control the press. You need to control the bureaucracy. The Democrat Party is doing all of it. And it's achieved most of it. And so that's why it's important to understand that when Democrat leaders wake up every day, they're trying to figure out how to destroy the status quo in order to empower themselves, the lens of power, power, because that's all they care about. Now, one of the things I wanted to touch on today, and so I will, is a chapter in my book that I haven't discussed much on the various appearances that I've made. It's a very, very important chapter in the book, chapter four, about language control and thought control. In writing this chapter, I not only use common sense and reason, but I studied what others who experienced totalitarian regimes had to say. And their names are in the book, and I give them credit, which I always do. Many of them are now dead. They have passed along. And yet they survived Stalin's Soviet Union. They survived Mao's China. Uh, they survived the Third Reich. And they wrote about it, about totalitarianism. How can you have so many people at the initial stage of these, these horrific genocidal regimes fall for it? And I wanted to discuss that with you a little bit because I see this happening in the United States in a big way, and so do you. You need to have a single social ends. That is, you need to impose a belief system on the people. Gradually, if you can aggressively, great. But if you have to do it gradually, you do it gradually. So what's happening in this country? Our dictionaries now have new words new words that have been promoted by the Marxist left and the Democrat Party. There are things you could say two, three years ago that you cannot say today. There are new words that have been created to accommodate the Democrat Party ideology and agenda, this Marxist ideology. New phrases that you never would have thought of before. And they're packaged together as part of a civil rights movement or as, a, or as progress or as equality, as justice, social justice, it doesn't really matter. You've got to change the language. Now, one of the men who was most adamant in promoting this was Lenin, again. He said the language needs to serve the party because the party is the state. In America, the Democrat Party really is becoming the state. We're reacting to the Democrat Party. We're reacting each and every day to what they're doing with the state, with the powers, the instrumentalities of the state against we the people. Republicans aren't doing anything. They're not that kind of a party. They're your typical political party. As I said, the Democrat Party is your typical autocratic party. It wants to, be, it wants to replace the state as the most important element in the governing system. That's why you have Xi as the chairman of the Communist Party. You need to become the chairman of the Communist Party to control the state. And the same thing is happening here in our own country. So you need to impose a belief system, a belief system that if children don't or have questions about their, uh, you know, whether they're boy or girl, tomboy, as an example, it's not like they're questioning their sexuality or their biological genitalia or anything like that. You have tomboys, you have uh, boys that like to play with dolls, you have all these things and they grow out of it over time and so forth and there's really nothing wrong with it. I mean, and then they grow out of it. But then when they're seized upon by government employees, by the state, through the educational system, the government educational system, this is the effort 
that's not really focused on the child, but destroying the relationship between the parent and the child. This is in the Communist Manifesto, that you must destroy the nuclear family, because the nuclear family has its own, as Marx would say, its own social belief system. And we cannot have the nuclear family or parents getting into the way of the party if we're going to control the state. The kids become either directly or indirectly, the property of the state. Remember Hillary Clinton in her book, It Takes a Village? It's that kind of attitude. It takes a village to do what? It takes a civil society where you have law and order, where you have tradition and customs, where you have belief systems, where you have morality, where you have faith. People voluntarily participating in various aspects of that society who embrace that society, who are assimilate, assimilated into the culture of that society. That's what a civil society is. That's what a social contract is. So for the Marxist and the Democrat Party, they want to break that. They want to destroy it. Because you have to destroy what is. You have to destroy the status quo in order to create this new nirvana or paradise. And you see this is exactly the track the Democrat Party is on. Want to see more Mark Levin? Go to levintv.com and subscribe now.